All right. So today I want to talk about something coming out of Metafair, led by Jan LeCun and his team, that shows a very different kind of AI taking shape. It's not built around generating text or chasing better word prediction at all. Instead, it drops the idea that intelligence has to revolve around producing words and focuses on predicting meaning directly. And once you really see how this works, it honestly feels like what comes after the LLM era, not just another upgrade on top of it. What they've built is called VL Jeppa, short for Vision Language Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture. The name sounds heavy, but the idea behind it is surprisingly straightforward. And once it clicks, a lot of design choices we've all accepted in modern AI suddenly start to feel inefficient or at least unnecessary. To understand why this matters, you have to look at how vision language models usually work today. Right now, most VLMs follow the same basic pattern. You show them an image or a video, you give them a prompt or a question, and they respond by generating text one token at a time. That's how image captioning works. That's how visual question answering works. That's how most large multimodal models operate under the hood. They're trained to predict the next word, then the next word, then the next word, again and again. That approach clearly works, but it comes with some hidden problems. The first issue is that these models are forced to learn a lot of things that don't actually matter for correctness. Take a simple example. If you ask, what happens if I flip this light switch down? There are many answers that are all perfectly fine. The light turns off, the room gets darker, the lamp goes dark. Humans immediately understand that these all describe the same outcome. But for a token-based model, those answers are totally different. They're different sequences of symbols with almost no overlap. During training, the model has to learn exact phrasing, word choice, and sentence structure, even though none of that changes the meaning. A huge amount of training effort goes into modeling surface-level language variation instead of the underlying idea. The second issue shows up when you try to use these systems in real time. Token by token generation is slow and awkward if you're dealing with live video, wearables, robotics, or anything that needs to understand what's happening continuously. You can't really know what the model means until it finishes generating text. The semantics only appear at the end of the decoding process. That adds latency, burns compute, and makes it hard to update information selectively. This is exactly where VLJEPA takes a completely different route. Instead of predicting words, VLJEPA predicts embeddings. These are continuous vectors that represent meaning directly, not the surface form of language. During training, the model never tries to generate text at all. It learns to map visual input and a text query straight into a semantic representation of the answer. The system is built from four main components and each one has a clear role. First, there's the visual encoder. This takes an image or a sequence of video frames and compresses it into a set of visual embeddings. You can think of these as visual tokens, except they're continuous vectors rather than discrete symbols. In this setup, they use VJEPA2, a self-supervised vision transformer with around 304 million parameters, and it stays frozen during training. Next comes the predictor, which is the core of the whole system. This module takes the visual embeddings and the text query, like a question or prompt, and predicts what the answer embedding should look like. It's built using transformer layers initialized from Llama 3.21b, but without causal masking. That means everything can attend to everything else. Vision and text interact freely. Then there's the Y encoder. This encodes the target text during training, the correct answer, into an embedding. That embedding becomes the learning target. Importantly, this representation is meant to capture the meaning of the answer, not the exact wording. Finally, there's the Y decoder. And this part is barely involved. It doesn't participate in training at all. At inference time, it only gets used when you actually need readable text. Most of the time, the model stays entirely in embedding space. Training works in a simple loop. You give the model a visual input, a query, and a target answer. The Y encoder turns the answer into an embedding. The predictor tries to produce that same embedding from the visual input and query. The loss is computed directly in embedding space, not in token space. What matters here is how the model learns without everything collapsing into noise. VLJEPA is trained so that its predicted meaning is pulled toward the correct meaning, while different answers are kept clearly separated. In practice, this forces the system to build a structured semantic space. Similar answers cluster together naturally. Different answers stay far apart. Instead of memorizing phrasing, the model organizes meaning itself, which keeps the whole representation stable and useful. This leads to the key insight behind the whole approach. In token space, multiple valid answers can be extremely far apart. In embedding space, 
those same answers can sit close together. That turns a messy, multimodal learning problem into a clean, single-mode one. The model no longer has to guess which wording you want, it just has to understand what the answer means. Because of this, VL Jeppa doesn't need a heavy language decoder during training. It's not learning how to write sentences, it's learning how to predict semantics. And that change alone cuts a huge amount of unnecessary work out of the system. And you can see it clearly in the results. To test whether this idea actually holds up, the researchers ran a rare kind of comparison where almost nothing was allowed to change. Same vision encoder, same resolution, same frame rate, same data mixture, same batch size, same number of training steps. The only difference was what the models were trained to predict. One model followed the standard route, predicting tokens with a 1 billion parameter language model. The VLJEPA version predicted embeddings using a roughly 500 million parameter predictor. So right away, the embedding-based system had about half the trainable parameters. Early in training, the two systems look similar. After around 500,000 samples, performance is roughly comparable. But as training continues, a clear pattern emerges. VLJEPA starts improving faster, and it keeps improving. After 5 million samples, it reaches around 14.7 CIDR on video captioning, while the token-based model is still around 7.1. Classification accuracy jumps to about 35% top 5 for VLJEPA versus roughly 27% for the baseline. And the gap doesn't close later. At 15 million samples, the difference remains. VLJEPA continues to learn more efficiently, even with fewer parameters. That's not a tuning trick. That's a structural advantage. The story doesn't stop at training efficiency either. Inference is where this approach really starts to shine, especially for video. Because VLJEPA produces a continuous stream of semantic embeddings, it supports something called selective decoding. Instead of generating text at fixed intervals, you monitor how the embeddings change over time. If the meaning stays stable, you don't decode anything. If there's a significant semantic shift, then you decode. They test this on long procedural videos from Ego XO 4D. These videos average about six minutes each and contain roughly 143 action annotations per video. Decoding text is the expensive part, so the goal is to recover the annotation sequence while minimizing how often decoding happens. They compare two strategies, uniform decoding, where text is generated at fixed time intervals, and embedding-guided decoding, where the embedding stream is clustered into semantically coherent segments and decoded once per segment. The result is clean. To match the performance of uniform decoding at one decode per second, VLJEPA only needs to decode about once every 2.85 seconds. That's roughly a 2.85 times reduction in decoding operations, with similar side ER scores. No fancy memory tricks, no KV cache gymnastics. It's just a consequence of working in semantic space. This is especially important for real-time systems like smart glasses, robotics, navigation, or live planning, where latency and compute cost actually matter. Another major advantage is versatility. VLJEPA can handle generation, classification, retrieval, and discriminative visual question answering using the same architecture. There are no task-specific heads and no separate models. For open vocabulary classification, candidate labels are encoded into embeddings and compared to the predicted embedding. The closest match wins. For text to video retrieval, the text query is encoded and videos are ranked by similarity. For discriminative VQA, all candidate answers are embedded and the nearest one is selected. They evaluate this across a wide set of benchmarks. On eight video classification datasets and eight text to video retrieval datasets, the base VLJEPA model with 1.6 billion parameters and only about 2 billion training samples outperforms CLIP, SIGLIP2, and Perception Encoder on average. Some of those baselines have seen up to 86 billion samples. After supervised fine tuning, the VLJEPA SFT model improves even further. It's no longer strictly zero shot, but as a single generalist model, it approaches specialist systems that are tuned individually for each data set. On visual question answering, the results are especially telling. They evaluate on GQA for compositional reasoning, Tally QA for complex counting, and Pope and Pope V2 for hallucination detection. VLJEPA SFT, with 1.6 billion parameters, lands in the same range as models like Instruct Blip and Quen VL, many of which rely on much larger backbones and multi-stage instruction tuning. It doesn't dominate every benchmark, but the fact that it's competitive at all is important because it's not a classic generative VLM. It answers questions by comparing meaning, not by generating freeform text. Then there's the world modeling experiment. Here, the model is shown an initial image and a final image and has to choose which action caused the transition from four candidate video clips. 
This is closer to understanding physical causality than language generation. VL JEPA SFT reaches 65.7% accuracy, setting a new state of the art. It outperforms larger vision language models and even beats frontier language models like GPT-40, Claude 3.5, and Gemini 2, which rely on captioning and text-based reasoning. That result matters. It suggests that directly predicting latent semantics can be more effective than narrating the world in words and reasoning over those words afterward. They also analyze the quality of the text embeddings themselves. Using hard negative benchmarks like Sugarcrate++ and Vizsla, they test whether the Y encoder can detect subtle semantic changes, like swapped attributes or altered relationships. The base VL JEPA Y encoder outperforms CLIP, SIGLIP2, and Perception Encoder, indicating a sharper and more structured semantic space. Finally, they stress test the system through ablations. When the large caption-based pre-training stage is removed, performance drops sharply, especially for classification and retrieval. Freezing the Y encoder hurts alignment. Overly simple training objectives weaken learning. Larger predictors help, particularly for VQA. Visually aligned text encoders consistently boost retrieval and classification. The pattern is consistent. When components that support semantic learning are strengthened, the model improves. When they're removed, it degrades. That kind of behavior is exactly what you want to see from a system that's meant to scale. VL JEPA isn't trying to replace language models everywhere. Tasks like deep reasoning, tool use, and agent-style planning still favor token-based systems, but for perception-heavy problems, especially those involving video, real-time input, and continuous understanding of the world, this approach fits naturally. It shifts the center of gravity from language to meaning. Words become an output option, not the core mechanism of intelligence. And that shift is what makes this work feel like more than just another model iteration. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.